We understand that the Republicans are recalcitrant. They are no good. Today's Republicans are no good and they are a clear and present danger to democracy as we know it. So if we do know that, then let's act like we know it. Our, my party has control of the Congress and the presidency and they should wield that power as if they have that power. They should wield it as if the neo-fascists that are trying to take over this country, starting with that Supreme Court, is a danger and use the power on behalf of the people. Don't play with it. Don't be timid with it. Use it. I had the opportunity to join a CNN panel earlier this week. And the major premise for the segment was about whether or not President Biden would draw a primary challenger. Now, of course, as the person representing the progressives in this, I was up against a more neoliberal uh, commentator who his main concern was about democracy. Senator, you're a Democrat who has been critical of Joe Biden over the years. This news reported by Isaac this morning is that Democrats are not at this point going to primary Joe Biden and they're warning others to not do the same. In other words, stay out of this. Do you think that's the right path? And I'm thinking to myself, if you really cared about democracy, you would be with the progressive wing of the Democratic Party demanding more of the Democrats so that we can beat back the neoliberals or beat back the neo-fascists, excuse me. Well, neoliberal, neo-fascists, same coin, different side. I started to think more and more about that, that interview and the question, the question about whether or not President Biden will be primaried is not as important as this question, which is what will the Democratic Party do to ameliorate the pain and the challenges that the American people are feeling. People need relief in this country, and one way to back off any primary challenge, should there be one, is to deliver for the people. It is to give them something that they can feel. It is to cancel student debt. It is to go ham on this extremist Supreme Court. It is to embody the spirit and tradition of President FDR. The more important question is, not whether or not Mr. Biden will be primary, but whether or not the Democrats are going to muster up the intestinal fortitude to do what is necessary to motivate people to come out to vote. And one of my fears, John and Brianna, in this particular moment, since, the, since people are so desperate and the pain is so deep, is that this Congress and this president are not bold enough for the moment. They are not going to be motivated by, oh my God, the neo-fascists are coming been there, done that. They are going to be motivated though by things that change their material conditions. So what kind of things could though, could that be? I'm so glad that you asked, cause, that you asked, because I, I jotted a few of those down. Canceling student debt would be a good start. 47 million people and their closest friends would benefit from the cancellation of student debt and it would have a particularly important racial component to it because black women hold the largest amount of student debt. So you get your race in, you get your class in, baby, everybody's happy. That's one thing. Codify roll. Go ahead and do away with the filibuster. All together do away with the filibuster, but minimally carve out the, the, a portion of the filibuster to be able to go ahead and codify Roe v. Wade. And so since you got Senators Murkowski and Collins and then Senators on our, on the Democratic side, cinema and mansion saying that they felt like they were lied to and, and that they don't like what the Supreme Court did, then they need to go ahead and show that they don't like what the Supreme Court did by carving out an exception for role within the filibuster, just like they did in 2021 for the debt ceiling. That can be done. Action. Let's keep on talking about the things that they can do and not the things that they cannot do. This is an emotional time for this country. Yes, the Republicans are dangerous and my party needs to act like it. It's just like having some firefighters come to your house, John and Brianna, and they got all the equipment and the fire chief says, you know what? We can't come in yet because we got to wait for a few more firefighters, even though they have all the tools at their disposal to put out the fire. The George Ford Act, long overdue. It was promised. They haven't done a thing about it. In Akron, Ohio, just recently, a 25-year-old young man was shot at 90 rounds by Akron police, 60 of those rounds piercing his body. Outrage is happening all over Northeast Ohio and other portions of this country, but still no talk about passing the George Floyd Police Act. You think those people in Akron care about Biden's approval rating? What they care about is whether or not the Department of Justice 
is going to come in here and help investigate to figure out what went wrong and how to prevent anything like this from happening ever again. That's what they care about. How about the John Lewis Voting Rights Act? All of these elected officials from Democrats to Republicans pontificate about how much they loved Congressman John Lewis. Yet here we are in July of 2022 and that bill has not passed. I just don't understand it. Well, I do understand it. It's the owner donors, but I'm going to come back to that. Let's keep this list going. We need to deal with the suffering of the people. That should be the center of any question. And once Democrats answer that, then they don't have to worry about whether or not President Biden is primary in 2024. Let's take this to the streets. The American people don't have time for folks to sit up here and pontificate. See, we're gonna need to take care of 2022 and 2023, and then 2022, 2023, then 2024 will take care of itself. We gotta give the people something they can feel and stop playing games. It's like, firefighters coming to your house if your house is on fire. And I said this, and they got all the tools necessary to put out the flipping fire, but they decide, the fire chief says, well, we can't make a move because we need some more people. No, make a move because you got all the help, all the tools that you need to put out the fire. And if some other folks come along the way, then beautiful. But if they don't, you are showing that, that homeowner, that build, building owner, that you care so much about them that you're gonna run into that building and put out that fire and save some folks. My message to my party is that we have all the tools at our disposal to put out the fire and we need to get at it so that people are more motivated to come out, not just because of clear and present danger to our democracy, but that we have elected leaders who feel their pain and who will ameliorate their pain. This so I want is... my party to stop playing games and let's get the business. That's the position that we are in in the United States of America. We do not have time to play games. So if the corporatist Democrats really do care about beating back neo-fascism and preserving this representative, uh, this republic of ours, this representative democracy, then they will start acting like it and stop putting the onus on the voters and the people of this country who gave Democrats what they asked for. They gave them the majority. Now, when they was asking for the majority, they didn't say that we had to have this many more votes in the majority. They said, give us the majority and watch some things happen. Well, I've watched some things happen and they're not good. So they got time to turn this around, but they got to stop playing games. And all of these folks in the bubble, they well taken care of. So they don't understand about what's happening in, in hoods where people are misunderstood. And that's the rural hoods, the urban hoods, or the suburban hoods. We got to give people something they can feel. If big mama and big daddy don't feel it, it's not happening. So my advice to the Democratic Party is to get a spine, some intestinal fortitude, and let's get to work.